Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a pretty lengthy tutorial because we basically have two things in one. So we're going to jump right in and get started. I am using some pattern vinyl from Gracefully Created and I have already cut a checkered pattern out of it. I will list that checkered pattern from Etsy down below for y'all. I imported the file into my design space and resized it to the exact dimensions of my tumbler I'm using. I'm doing a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia and those dimensions were 9.45 by 8 inches tall. And listen, removing these squares took me forever to figure out. Like, no exaggeration. It probably took me a full hour just to weed this because I kept taking some off and then I replaced some and then I would think I would figure it out and then I definitely didn't. So to save y'all that same stress over what squares to take off and what to leave on, I created this for y'all just so that you can print it out. You can even do black and white since there are contrasts between the colors and have a guide to go by if you choose to recreate this tumbler or this style. I'm of course leaving all of the pattern vinyl squares and I am going to remove all of the squares that are black on the example sheet, but we are going to glitter these green. Once I had that weeded, then I put a piece of transfer tape over top and I did forget to use the squeegee tool and sort of press that transfer tape on. So I had a little difficult time getting it to release from the backing and onto my tumbler. But what I ended up doing is of course using the hinge method to line it up and leave a little bit of that stainless at the top. I used the squeegee tool to help remove that backing and just rolled my tumbler while putting a lot of pressure down towards the table to eliminate any bubbles and just rolled the tumbler right on to that pattern vinyl. And doing this, I also forgot to remove the piece of transfer tape over where my seam would go. So a few of my squares went on top of the transfer tape and luckily it is removable vinyl. So I was able to just remove it right off and place it on the tumbler. Now to make this easier for myself and make sure I don't put glitter in places they don't need to be, I went through and marked all of these squares that were going to be green, which was of course 
Probably not necessary since it was all of the stainless spot showing, but I still marked them and then I went through and marked all of the ones that were going to be orange on top of the vinyl that was going to need to be removed after we did our green glitter. Once I had all of my spots marked, then I was ready to add my glitter. I am using glitter glue from Colorflex. You can grab some of this at either artistryepoxy.com or colorflexpigments.com. If you saw that little hand pop on, that is my daughter Ava. She's always got my back working on these tumblers, whether that is to catch a cup rolling away or <laughs> to strongly critique everything that I'm doing. I mean, if you ever need an honest opinion on something, ask a kid. They have absolutely no filters. <laughs> okay, so I am going to go around all of the stainless spots that I have marked that I'm going to apply green glitter and apply my glitter glue. I am doing a moderate coat. It's not too heavy, but it is enough to grab a hold of this glitter in small sections. I love that this glue has a thicker consistency because I feel like it really grabs a hold of the glitter, especially when working in smaller areas like this. I'm only going to do four to six of these at a time, trying my best to stay within those lines. I had all intention of not having to apply vinyl to this tumbler but I did go out of the lines on quite a few of them and my squares looked a little crazy. So that's why we ended up having to be a little extra <laughs> and adding on all of the stripes. For our green, we are using this absolutely beautiful dark moss green. It is Anaconda from Colorflex. If y'all know me, you know that I love my moss green, army green, and sage colors. And when I opened this up, oh my gosh, I was like, this is gorgeous. I very lightly tapped that glitter down and then moved on to my next sections.
Now on the bottom ones, I had intended on doing something different with the bottom of this tumbler. If you choose to glitter over the bottom, you absolutely can just choose one of the two colors or you can mix the two colors together to make a really pretty combination and then use that to glitter the bottom portion of your tumbler rather than popping that bottom off like we are going to do here in just a bit and adding some rhinestones. Once I had all of my green sections glued and glittered, then I went in and removed all of the pieces of vinyl I had over orange marked on. I removed these sections before my glue dried and then I sat this cup to the side for two hours to allow that glue to dry completely underneath so that I could spray seal all of this green in and then we could move on to working with our orange. So again, after I allowed that glue under the green to dry for about two hours, I spray sealed this with a matte clear coat twice to make sure that my green was nice and sealed in and I wasn't going to have any mixing of my colors. I went through and did the exact same thing with those little square sections and then added on my orange glitter. The orange that we are using is Pluto from PDB Creative Studio. This is another just absolutely gorgeous color. It is beautiful for fall and couldn't have matched the flowers in this vinyl more perfectly. Once I finished all of my orange sections, I set this to the side once again after tapping off all the excess glitter, allowed that to dry for about two hours, and then went in with two coats of epoxy and then sanded it smooth. We are working with two sizes of vinyl. This is the textured metallic brown from Tech Wrap Craft. Textured metallic vinyl is one of my absolute, or actually my absolute favorite from Tech Wrap Craft. It just adds so much depth and dimension to tumblers rather than using just a 
plain like matte or glossy vinyl so the two sizes that we are using the first is cut to 0.1 by 11 and a half inches that is going to be our main stripes we are doing three of those one in between each of the seams of these squares on either side and then one straight down the middle so all of our sections that are just glitter and do not have that pattern vinyl in them will have three stripes and that goes for all of the sections going up the tumbler and around the tumbler Once all those vertical lines are complete, we're going to go around the tumbler, just overlapping those vertical lines. Make sure as you are working your way around or after you get your line in place, you do press it down really well. We're going to seal this in, but we still wanna make sure that our vinyl is nice and pressed down so it has adhesion to our surface.
Now, once I got to the bottom of the tumbler, I did leave off that bottom stripe. We're gonna take this off and cut off that excess at the bottom and finish it off with some black spray paint. So if you were to have glittered the entire tumbler, then I would definitely come up just a bit from the bottom and trim off that excess vinyl just so it doesn't curve over the bottom and cause any lifting while you epoxy or whenever you sand your rim sometimes it will sand off some of the shine and this vinyl does turn white if you sand any of it off so we definitely do not want that And I do realize I did not mention the size for the smaller stripes earlier. This is cut 0 0.06 by 11 and a half inches. And we are going to take one strip straight up and down alongside our pattern vinyl. And then we are going to do that all the way around the tumbler. And then we're going to go the opposite way as well, creating a little bit of like an L shape within our pattern vinyl. Don't forget to trim all of your excess vinyl off the top. I am using this awesome craft knife. I've had so many questions about it. I love it because you can just snap the end of the blade off once it goes dull. I'll have it linked down below for y'all. It is my absolute favorite craft knife I have used and I have been making tumblers for going on three years now. To make sure that our vinyl does not lift after we apply our epoxy, I am going to use some quick seal from Artistry. My absolute favorite thing about this stuff is that you can use it over a sanded surface and you will not be able to see your sand lines under your epoxy. So I have sanded this tumbler and added on my stripes. I can use this quick seal over top of it and prevent my vinyl from lifting when I epoxy. 
The other method is to use a matte clear coat or some sort of spray sealer, but you cannot do that over top of a sanded surface. Otherwise, your lines will most definitely show under that spray paint. So having this stuff is just incredible. I allowed that to dry for about an hour before moving into the next step. I'm using a very small flathead with a hammer to remove the bottom of this tumbler. This is a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia and it is the only tumbler that I know that you can remove the bottom of without compromising the performance of the tumbler. Once I had that bottom off, I used some painter's tape to tape off the bottom of my tumbler. I trimmed off any excess vinyl that may have been over the corner of the bottom of the cup and then spray painted it black. After my spray paint had completely dried, I took a two inch circle of that same vinyl that we used for our plaid pattern and put that in the center of the bottom of the tumbler. Since there is some grooves and lines in here, I used my heat gun to heat this vinyl up just ever so slightly so that I could form it to that space on the bottom. After that, I mixed up about five milliliters of epoxy and put a mixture of Anaconda and Pluto into my epoxy and then mix that up and put it around that first outer ring on the bottom of the tumbler. I did use a fast setting epoxy in which you can apply a second coat within 30 minutes. So I gave that about 30 minutes to dry and then added on my first layer of epoxy. Now after epoxying my tumbler, I went to the bottom and very, very lightly went over the bottom of this tumbler just to seal in that vinyl before we add on our rhinestones. You do want to get this nice and smooth because after this layer, you will add on your final layer of epoxy since you will not be able to epoxy once you have your rhinestones on. Having a fast set epoxy that dries as quickly as this one does come really in handy on this cup because there were so many layers and so many steps. I mixed some fast set up once again. I used maybe half a milliliter for the bottom of the tumbler. I want a very thin layer, but enough for the rhinestones to adhere to the bottom, but not sink into. This little silicone tool is from PDB Creative Studio, as well as the rhinestone tool and the transparent rhinestones that we are using. 
I use the tool to spread this epoxy around nice and even and get it all the way to the edge. And then we were ready to add on our rhinestones. These are not glass, these are resin rhinestones, again from PDB Creative Studio. I am using five millimeter. Just poured them into this tray to make it easy for me to pick up with my tool. And I started in the center and just worked my way all around in this circle. Using some resin rather than glue to apply the stones gives it a longer work time so that you can sort of manipulate all of these stones into this small space. I did not have different sizes of these, so I'm only working with five millimeter or what would be SS20 if you were to use glass rhinestones. I am going to let this play all the way through so that you can see how I sort of move the stones around and make them really fit into the space without much negative space in between.
Once I had all of my rhinestones in place, I allowed this to dry completely and then went over them with a little scrub brush and some Dawn dish soap to bring their shine back. I'm going to be honest, I really was not in love with the result of this tumbler. I was sort of making fun of it, saying that it looked like a mama's tablecloth at Thanksgiving. <laughs> but it's really starting to warm up to me. I really love the bottom of it. So we will definitely be making some more fancy booties on these tumblers in the future. As always, I will have all of the materials that I used listed down below in the description as well as some coupon codes for y'all. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. I will have that guide pinned to the top of my group so that y'all can save and print that out if you want to recreate this design. That is all for today. Thank you all so much, and we will see you next time.